Joni Petrie and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'd like to talk about who's in the news, which is Natalie Wood. Natalie Wood was one of the most beautiful Hollywood stars in, in the 60s and I want to say that she was in some of my favorite old movies such as Splendor in the Grass, um, West Side Story, she played along James Dean and some of the greats. She was a child actress and what happened was her mother was obsessed with, with making her a star and she became one of those awful mothers with, you know, their children pushing, pushing them and having no respect for them, just everything about making money and being famous. So, you're going to find that in her chart, there is much to do about the mother. But the reason why I am bringing Natalie Wood's chart to the focus is that, yes, she's been gone since 1981. And from that point on, she, no one really knows what happened. So in 1981, she was on her yacht with her husband. Robert Wagner and Christopher Walken and Christopher Walken was her co-star at the time but what happened was that evening they went across the way to a restaurant proceeded to drink heavily and somehow that night there were arguments that somehow she had drowned and what was said was it was an accidental drowning. But come to find out, a lot was never attested to all the bruises and, and black and blue marks that there was most definitely not just an accidental drowning. And many people that worked on the, the yacht have been coming forth lately attesting to the arguments and fight that they heard before she had drowned. So what's very interesting, I think right now, is where Rahu and K2 are right now, because Rahu right now is in the sign of Capricorn and K2 is in the sign of Cancer. And remember, this means that the eclipses are occurring in these signs. And eclipses are what bring things back. Eclipses bring things out of the dark. And you'll find that 18 and a half years ago, or each 18 and a half years ago, because we can go back another 18 and a half years ago, this puts the eclipses in the same sign and things relative to those years will surface again. And I find it fascinating that right now, where the eclipses were falling then, they're falling here again, and now they've decided to reopen the case on Natalie Wood's death because they suspect foul play. So I thought it would be very interesting to look at her chart in terms of was this an accident and what was going on in her chart that represented this fatal accident. And I'm going to point out some things that I have found very specific that you may not know about using Vedic Astrology. So let's put Natalie Wood's chart up and we'll talk about how this happened and what I suspect happened. So Natalie Wood put her chart up here. Her birthday was July 20th, 1938. The time of birth was 1116 a.m. in San Francisco, California. Natalie Wood's ascendant was Virgo. And with that, you're going to find that Virgos can be very uh, meticulous, orderly, but they can also be have a lot of issues and problems. But the most significant thing, I think, looking at her chart is looking at well, many things I might add, but her moon, which is around seven degrees of Aries in the eighth house. 
The eighth house is the most difficult house, and I feel like people that have a moon there have major issues and problems throughout life with disgrace, humiliation, scandals. Remember the eighth house of scandals? But with the mother, because the moon is the indicator of the mother. And another thing that, that you must be trained to look for is when you're talking about issues with the mother, you have to look at the 11th house because the 11th house is the 8th house from the 4th house. 4th house meaning the mother, the 4th house represents the mother, as well as the moon is, is indicative of the mother. So if you go to the 4th house and you count 8 houses from the 4th, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, you will arrive at the 11th house. Remember in the Vedic chart, we're always counting clockwise, not counterclockwise. So when you come to the 11th house, it is the eighth from the fourth, representing problems with the mother. Notice that Natalie has her K2 there. Very significant for issues and problems around the mother. Well, come to find out Natalie, as a child actress, was terrified of water. You see, the mother went to a psychic and the psychic many years ago told her that she was going to drown. That's how she was gonna die, talking to the mother. So the mother projected all of her feelings and fears into Natalie and Natalie was terrified of the water. And come to find out, in a scene where she was only about 10 years old, she, it required that she walked over a bridge that was meant to collapse and fall into running water. And the child was so horrified when she fell in, she broke her wrist and she did almost drown. But then she was always mortified of water. She had a, such a phobia of water. They said that she was even terrified to have her hair washed. So here is somebody terrified. And one thing I might add that's very, very significant about this, look at her chart. Look at where her mercury is. Her mercury is at 29 degrees of cancer. Planets that are the last degree of a water sign or the first degree of a fire sign are called Gandanta. And Gandanta literally means drowning. And it does literally mean that sometimes these people almost drown. They have near calls with drowning or they do actually drown. Or if that's not the case, it can mean that your life's out of control. Gundanta means you feel like you're drowning. You never can grasp or get a hold of anything. And this was the case in Natalie's life. So I want to talk about the time and, and the, I want to go straight to when this event happen, happened according to her death and drowning because there are many things that were happening. So when we go to the death, she died November 28th, 1981, that evening in, off the coast of, in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of Los Angeles. So looking at where the transiting planets were that day, you will notice that in her fourth house, if you will put trans, the transits, you will see that there are many planets transiting her natal fourth house, which is Venus, K2, and the moon. And notice, the moon is with Neptune. And if you transpose these transiting planets into her chart, they land in the fourth house. The fourth house many times can re be referred to as the end of life. It is. It's the darkest, deepest part of a chart. Neptune being there can represent that we will never know the truth. But I hope that's not true but it can mean that. Notice that on that day, Venus and K2 were exactly 29 degrees of Sagittarius. 
And what I'm going to teach you in this lesson is to always look at planets in their 6-8 relationship. When you're looking at transits, look to where they're affecting natal planets, 6 and 8 placements from where they are. Because this is called the quincunx aspect, but in Vedic astrology, we simply call it a 6-8 relationship. And if you know what the 6th house means and the 8th house means, that's relative to what this aspect can produce. So the 6th house can be accidents, the 8th house can be death. And this is what this aspect can cause. So if you'll place Venus and K2 there at 29 degrees of Sagittarius, you're going to find that, this, that these planets are going to be aspecting, notice, let's count from the fourth, one, two, three, four, five, six, they are aspecting K2, six, seven, eight, almost exactly, well, exactly, actually, it's aspecting her Gandanta Mercury, 29 degrees of Cancer. So you see, very interesting K2, let me repeat this, K2 in Venus, 29 degrees of Sagittarius, exactly activating her natal Mercury at 29 degrees of Cancer. So that's one thing to be looked at. Another thing is the eclipses, of course, they just shifted from being exactly where they are right now. But they have, but K2 just shifted. Remember the nodes travel backwards, so they just shifted into 29 degrees of Sagittarius. But that night, it was right there around that last degree in Capricorn where the nodes are currently bringing up this thing of the past. So I believe there's going to be something that we're going to soon know about. So I want you to look at Neptune being with the moon in her, Neptune transiting with the moon in the fourth house. That represents some major issues with things being hid, hidden. And if you want to look at some other transits that are very profound, you want to look at where transiting Mercury and Uranus are. They were conjunct that, that evening. Mercury was seven degrees of Scorpio. Uranus was seven degrees of Scorpio. And if you count the six, eight relationship to where those planets will apply, notice that Uranus and Mercury are in a quincunx 6-8 relationship to natal moon in her 8th house. So if you'll count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, they exactly aspect that moon. And then if you count back to where they are transiting, you will arrive at 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then counting back from the moon to where the transiting Mercury and Uranus are, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So once again, we have an exact degree of this treacherous 6, 8, or 8, 6 relationship. Because remember the Venus K2 to natal Mercury, that counts 8 to Mercury, but if you count from Mercury back to where those two planets, Venus, K2, are, that will come 6. So it's always either 6, 8, or 8, 6. And these exact degrees represent this was the time of this death and accident. 6th house is accidents, 8th house is death. So interesting to note those and the way that the Gandanta planet Mercury is the one that is triggered. Now also during this time, you're going to find that transiting Jupiter, which was six degrees, almost seven degrees of Libra, is almost exactly aspecting her natal Jupiter, which is in her sixth house. So sometimes Jupiter, you have to realize, is present 
making an aspect in a death. That's very significant. I find this to happen all of the time. And also, if you will notice once again that, that Uranus and Mercury at seven degrees of Scorpio is exactly aspecting natal Jupiter at seven degrees of Aquarius in the sixth house by a square, full square aspect, but it is exact. So it, so you're going to find that the Mercury Uranus and Uranus represents sudden unexpected events is aspecting Jupiter, which is in the sixth house of accidents by a square exact. So that's another aspect to be reckoned with. Now, another thing to look at the, at the Dashas, because during this time she was in, at the time of the accident, she was in Mars and Mars Mahadasha. And if you'll notice, Ketu's Bukti. So Mars Ketu. And when you look at Mars, Mars is debilitated. It's in Cancer, but it does have a Parivartana, a mutual exchange uh, with, with her natal moon. So natal Mars in Cancer, Cancer's ruled by the moon. You go to the moon. The moon is in Aries, which is ruled by Mars. They're in Parivartana in each other's signs. So this really intensifies Mars in terms of its disposing planet, Dispositor, the moon in the eighth house. And when she went into Mars Mahadasha, this was a treacherous and dangerous time for her by the fact that Mars was connected in such a way with the eighth house moon. But what you're going to find is that K2, if you look at her Navamsha chart, which the Navamsha is very significant, especially in terms of, of analyzing the Dasha planets, is in the eighth house, which does indicate loss during this period. But one thing that I think is very interesting, and I'm going to go back to uh, some other transits that I think are significant, and that is the transit of Mars, transiting Mars, was at 28 degrees of Leo. Notice that it is aspecting by its eighth full aspect. Mars cast a full aspect, eight placements from itself. So if you count from Mars to where her Saturn is in the seventh house, it's an eighth aspect. So Mars at 28 degrees is aspecting Saturn at 24 degrees in the seventh house of marriage and relationships. So obviously she was having problems and there was a big fight. The other tr transit that I think is significant relative to the problems she was having in her marriage was the transit of Saturn. Notice that transiting Saturn is at 25 degrees of Virgo, almost exactly to the minute aspecting natal Saturn at 24 degrees, 57 minutes in her seventh house, less than a degree away. So you have both Mars, transiting Mars and transiting Saturn aspecting her seventh house which is marriage and relationships, and aspecting natal Saturn in the seventh house. Now here's where I think something is very relative to what's being brought up now. I've never thought to look at this, but I think when you look at someone's chart and you look at where the dashas and the transits continually move on in the chart, even though the person may be gone, I think it's relative to events that could be occurring now. And so Natalie Wood is about to enter into her Saturn's Mahadasha in May. And if you will notice, there are lots of planets that are now triggering her seventh house, but particularly her Mahadasha ruler, Saturn in the seventh house. So this could prove out that the truth about her spouse, Saturn in the seventh, Robert Wagner, 
will the truth will be known. And another thing is when the summer months come and the eclipses start to fall in her chart of her 11th house, there's going to be Rahu transiting her 11th house and K2 in her fifth house with Mars. Mars as it's in Capricorn will be aspecting that moon and will be aspecting the sun and natal Mars. And I suspect something will come out while she enters into her Saturn Mahadasha. Remember, her natal Saturn is in the seventh house and the eclipses start to activate her moon and her sun. So we will see what evolves. I think if because I'm looking at the 11th house being significant, that her friend, Christopher Walken, maybe if he will come forth with more information, we will finally know the truth. But do I think Robert Wagner will admit? Probably not. So the truth will be revealed. And Natalie Wood, I believe, after all these years, will finally rest in peace. So with that, I'd like to close. If you would like a transcript of this analysis, you can go to my magazine, which is astrologicmagazine.com. And if you would like to learn Vedic Astrology, I have a university, which is universityofvedicastrology.com. And if you would like a reading or to learn more about me, you can always go to my main website, which is galacticcenter.org. Thank you.